guys what's up welcome back to another of my arc survival evolve server tutorials and this one is going to be an extended version to one of my tutorials that i have already made and in my recent video that you should have already probably watched what it goes over is how to make a free arc survival evolve server and you don't have to you know pay us uh, you know monthly fees for this because it's hosted on your computer you can have your friends join through your ip and it's like uh, pretty safe um, the only exception though is like you are opening up your ports, you are making your IP public, and you are risking the chances of getting DDoS in case a DDoSer were to get upset with you and they want to DDoS your server for some odd reason, then it could happen. It has happened to me uh, when I had a public Minecraft server, I got DDoS, and that's why if you are uncertain with um, hosting your own server, that's why there's other options. You could just search Arc Server Evolve Hosting uh I, I guess like on Google and you could find a bunch of server hosters which is pretty pricey in my opinion because you have to pay for like pretty much all of this you don't even need SSDs you don't even need all this stuff really and you still get it though and all they do is they just host a server for you and it it's not free but it's it's available and it does get pretty pricey because like I, I believe it's like 50 cents per slot and you can only go up to 10 minimum so yeah you know it gets pretty pricey at the pay monthly so that's why I made a tutorial right here, how to make an Arc Survival Evolve server for free, and you could config it and all that stuff. It goes over a lot. And there was some confusion. Uh, if you scroll down, there are some confusion because people had a little confusion with uh, this little section right here, which I'm going to go over real quick in case you are coming back from the first video and you're still confused. Well, I'm here to clear it up. And the issue that people had was that um, there was an error that was appearing when you copied this code into your text document. And if you haven't seen my first video, you won't understand what I'm talking about. And basically how to fix this uh, line of code is that you have to make sure that you are putting your username that is relevant to your account in Windows. So mine is SEM owns. So I'm going to put right here SEM owns. Okay, so uh, basically that line of code just explains where your base files are located. And this is what you have to change your username. So just make sure you put your username and not mine because that was the problem. Everyone was putting my username even though they weren't under my Windows account. So they're having problems with that. So hopefully that would clear that up for you guys. And uh, first off, uh, we are going off this text document I wrote yesterday. So I'm going to be trying uh, to understand what I was writing yesterday before I went to sleep. So disclaimer, this video is an extended tutorial to my how to make an ARC Survival Evolve server. You must follow from the very beginning to understand my references, which is true. I'm going over a lot of references from my first video because it shows you how to make a free ARC server. Now I'm going to show you how to make mods and put mods inside that server. So yeah, we're going to catch up from where we left off. Basically, we already have the server. It's inside here. Uh, we made ourselves a folder called ARC Server. We've installed everything. We made a couple uh, window batches. And we basically uh, continue on from there. So let's go ahead and start installing mods in our Arc Survival Evolve server. So first off, we're going to create a backup to your entire Arc server folder where your server files are located. It should be around 12, uh, 42 gigabytes. I recommend doing this in case you have some uh, files that you want to restore and in case you don't want to re-download everything in case you make a mistake. So I have a backup up here. If I double click this, it has my Arc server folder right here. It's like 42 gigs and it's pretty much a copy of this folder right here. This is where all my files are at in case I mess up. And in case you do mess up, just make sure you just copy it and then you have like a constant backup available. But once you get this all correct and you feel comfortable, you can just go ahead and delete the backup once you feel comfortable with the stuff we're about to do in this tutorial, which is going to be pretty easy if you just follow along. Step three, update your server files to the latest version. This should take about five to ten minutes to update. And what you do is you go here back to your arc server batch we made on our last video. And what this does is that it not only downloads all the files to arc but it also checks if there's an update available if i go ahead and edit this you can see what the command prop says it has your username your steam password and you might have to find uh, or you might have to use your stu your two-step verification on steam because it's going to log into your steam real quick to check that it, you actually own arc and it's going to download the files for you so you might have to check your phone for a verification number or you might have to go to your email address because it's going to ask when you double click this it's going to say two-step verification code and you just have to enter it. So make sure you have that uh, in your disposal. So then, yeah, it's just basically going to go here to your base files. 
and uh, it's going to install the updates, the app update right here, and that's basically it. So it's going to update your files to the latest versions. I recommend doing that so that you don't have to struggle with updating later on. And just to let you know, this is where your Arc server is located. It's in your base files, okay? So this is your entire server right here, and everything outside of it, like the bin configs, all this stuff doesn't really matter except for this. All that matters is this Arc server and your base files, okay? You could just forget about the rest because this is where your server is at, and we're gonna be remembering where your uh, files are located. So just remember, in our last tutorial, we installed everything in our base files. So whatever you named your folder, I, put, I called mine base files, because it was easy to remember and plus it was, it's all in caps. All right, so after number three, you update your server files to the latest version. What we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to number four, which is to download the Arc server launcher and extract its contents into a folder. Now what the Arc server launcher is all about is it's a simple launcher that makes it easy for you to manage your server. And another thing too is you could download mods. It does everything for you in a way. It connects directly to the workshop. And what's cool too is um, if you didn't know this, if you install mods in your Arc server folder and you have like a bunch of mods, uh, you don't have to worry if your friends have those mods installed or not because what it does is when your friends try to connect to your server, it would automatically uh, tell their client to download all the mods for them. So they don't have to have a list of mods. You don't have to make a list of mods and tell them to install all of those because the moment they try to log into your server, it's just going to download automatically. So let's go ahead and download the Arc server launcher. We're going to be connecting that to our local host, which is inside here. This is all our local files inside our Arc server. In order to find the Arc server launcher, you're going to go down to the description. You're going to probably have to go to my website because I like to host all my stuff there neatly. And um, you're going to go here which is a uh, forum post in Steam, which is uh, created by Face Wound, I guess. And uh, you're gonna download the Arc server launcher right here. It's the first one. This is it right here. I might just go ahead and leave the link for you and the forum post, so you could just click on either one. So you do not need the Arc remote. This is only used for if you were to have like these uh, secondary sources of uh, remotely accessing your server files, like in case you have a host, you might need a remote to tell it to turn on and turn off from your desktop. So you don't really need a remote because you're doing this in your computer. So it's kind of free. So this is if you have yourselves a host, uh, but our host is ourselves. So we're just going to be using the Arc server launcher. And once you get that downloaded, it's going to come here. And this is how it looks right here. It's the Arc server launcher. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder and we're going to go ahead and call it Arc launch or whatever you want to truly call it this is where we're going to be launching our server and just maintaining it you could actually have it inside your arc server folder but i just want to keep it inside its own separate thing so you just remember which one's which so this is the arc launch this is the launch your server now and this is just you don't have to touch this anymore this is going to be irrelevant you just have to just keep it here because it's all your saves and files of arc and but this is where you're going to be doing most of the stuff now so i'm going to double click this which is the download for arc server launcher and it comes with three files inside here, the launcher itself, an updater, and a default. We're gonna drag those three items into your Arc launch folder that you just created for the contents. So you're gonna double click, open it up, and what you're gonna do is go here to Arc server launcher, double click it, say run, and here we are. So there's the setup right here, and uh, we don't need a remote, so this is the remote access. This is if you have a paid host, you know, through an external site or something. Uh, you don't need this, so we're doing it locally because we're doing it free. We're doing it cheap, so this is uh, this is the purpose of this tutorial. So we're gonna go here to local, and now we have to put the existing server installation, and w this is the base directory, and that is our base files. That's why I called it base files because it's the base directory. So what we're gonna do is go here to browse, and we're gonna find our Arc server right here. It's gonna be our Arc server, not our launcher. We're gonna open up our Arc server, and we're gonna link this setup to our base files. This is where all our files are located and all you have to do is press OK and that's it. All right, so now that we've done that, press next, gonna download some stuff. It is being linked to our base files. This is where we installed everything and give it a moment for it to set up. So now that it is done installing and setting up, now we have full control over our server, which is cool. Right here, we could examine all our settings. This is step number six. We could understand the software and begin download, downloading mods. So here it is. Uh, this is your 
I believe this is your uh, IPv4 address, which automatically applies. If you haven't already port forward, then your ports are not going to be here, I believe. So, yeah. Another thing, too, is if you don't know how to port forward, then you're never going to understand how to make your own server. And that that was a big problem in my last video, too, because no one knew how to port forward. So it was pretty tricky. But if you know how to port forward, you're like, you don't even have to watch this video because you probably already understand everything. So um, you could actually update your files from here. Uh, I don't recommend it because you already updated it before watching this tutorial. That was like step number, what, two? Oh, no, that was number three. So you just have to update your server files. So if you already updated, you, ha you don't have to do that again. But just know that you could update your server files through here, too, if there's a new update in the future. You could have message of the day. Just examine this software and understand how to use it. So now let me show you how to install mods. So in order to in uh, install mods, you could go here under mods. But before we install mods, I want to show you the rules. Here's general rules. There's some sliders here and you could just increase everything like the difficulty, the EXP meter. If you want it to be a lot higher, you could change everything right here remotely and you could click save right here, save profile and it'll save it. And that's pretty cool. All right, let's go here under mods and this is how to install mods. You have to click on the mods tab. It's going to take a bit because it's connecting to the workshop and now you will have a list of mods that you are able to download, install and run on your server. So here it is. This is where you search for mods and this is where you add them. Now it's a bit tricky how to install mods. Actually, it's not too tricky, but just understand that it requires a couple steps to install a mod. So let's say we want a sticky grenade mod. We go up here, we spell in sticky and just keep in note that it kind of lags here and there just because it's just like searching through a huge database. And here it is. So we have sticky grenades in case you want one of these. Uh, you can see that there's a bunch of subs and viewers. These are how many people have the mod installed. Go ahead and click add. Once you add it, it's here, but it's not activated yet. So you want to activate your mods after you have a list of them, or you could just do it like now. But um, I'm going to go ahead and install one more mod. You'll see that once you add it, there will be a check mark next to it. And it's pretty, it's it's a pretty laggy uh, a little client here or a little software, but don't even worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and add one more thing, which is the launcher or the jetpack. All right, so I went ahead and added another mod, which is the jetpack mod. And here they are right here. So um, this one doesn't show its icon. Don't even worry about it because we j all we have to do is just activate them from now. So this is the list of mods we have already selected. Let's go ahead and click on the sticky grenade. We're going to click on it. It's going to say here, activate. We're going to go ahead and click activate. Now it shows a check mark. And now we're going to click install slash update. So now it's going to install it directly to our server. And once this closes, the this command prompt is just installing it and downloading it for you. Then we are ready to do the same exact thing to our Jetpack mod. And now it says success mod installed. Go ahead and press OK. Click here on the Jetpack mod. Do the same exact thing. Click activate first and click install. And there we go. If you click install, it's not activated. And if you deactivate it, so let's say in one of your sessions, you, you want to keep the Jetpack mod, but you don't want it to be on the server. Go ahead and click deactivate. And then if you want it on the server again, go ahead and click activated. It doesn't have to download all over again because it's already installed. That's why you click install slash update. So now that both of these are ready to go, now we go here to server and click launch server. It will launch right here. And um, that's basically it. That's how to install mods on your Arc server. And now all you have to do is just come back to this launcher every time you want to play Arc. You don't have to go back to your uh, Arc server stuff. You just go back to the launcher here and you just open up this launcher. You can update from here, install mods, click launch server. It's pretty darn awesome. And it does the same exact thing. After you click launch server, it's going to go here and it's going to open up a command prompt that looks like this. And that's going to take a while because this is Arc servers. And what happens is the startup takes forever for me. So just remember that your server is not fully available until this message appears. It says fully startup. It takes a bunch of seconds. This is the last message you'll receive before your server begins. Just consider that the moment you click start server, all it's going to appear is just like a couple messages, like all the way up to max players right here. Just going to show this little section. And then finally, it'll show the full startup is fully completed and it'll show you the number of cores. And that's the last message you will uh, that will appear until your server is ready to go. 
You should already know that if you watched my first video, I went over that. And that's basically it guys. That's how to link up the server launcher here to your server and how to install mods. Easy as that. And if you have any problems, make sure to let me know because you know, I'm really good with tutorials in my opinion, and I know how to solve a lot of problems. I've helped out plenty of people. I have had a help forums in the past where I helped out thousands actually. So. You know, just tweet me at Twitter, no joke. Tweet me at Twitter. If you post a comment in this video, I'm not gonna be able to reply quickly, but if you tweet me at Twitter, uh, at, you, at SEM owns is my username, it should be on the screen right now. But if you tweet me, I will be able to respond quickly, and that's about it. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next Arc Survival Evolve tutorial.